let's see, Matthew Lloyd says, um, how do you answer those who aren't necessarily anti-gun but who are sick of seeing people be killed or shot? I don't know what else to do other than push through more common sense gun restrictions. It seems that in order to connect with them, the answer needs to be one of emotion and empathy rather than rhetoric and facts. You got that right. We all have the facts on our side, but emotion will always be on the side of knee-jerk reactions because, after all, we have to do something precisely correct. When we start arguing about a 30-round magazine or not, whether or not we have a constitutional right for a 30-round magazine for our AR-15s, we lose badly. So when we argue guns, I... I don't talk about hunting. Hunting is is a uh, hunting is is cheating. I don't have AR-15 or a 45 because I'm worried about a deer coming into my house at three in the morning. I'm worried about a person coming in. So, you know, let's get to the brass tacks here. I have weapons to kill bad guys, and that's why I have them. And now you can start getting down to the emotional. You're exactly right down to the emotional substrate. So if you're talking with somebody who's getting anti-gun, you can say something like this: Do you think that a 23-year-old teacher should have the right to have a chance to not be raped in a parking lot, raped and murdered. Do you think she should have a chance to not be raped and murdered, or do you think that she must submit to one or two 200, 300-pound men who, who then will rape and murder her in order to make you more morally comfortable, in order for you to be more virtue signaling at a cocktail party? Does that woman, does that young woman have a right to defend herself, yes or no? Yes or no? It's really that simple. And once you get that simple, then you win every single time. There's not a person alive today who's, who's insane enough to say she does not have that right. Although some of them, you know, these people say, well, you know, uh, you have right, no right to shoot a criminal who's trying to kill you because you're depriving them of their human rights. This is the kind of conversations you have on university campuses and cocktail uh, parties. If somebody's coming at you to kill you, all of a sudden you'd like a gun or you'd like somebody with a gun to be there. So let's just understand that. Um, you... You have to go to the moral core of it. You have to say, if you are saying that this woman does not have a right to defend herself, then you are saying that, that the most precious creatures on the earth, human beings, are the only creatures on the earth that are not allowed to defend themselves. How does that work? One little story I tell that always gets a laugh, and getting a laugh is nice because as Cameron was talking about, the nice thing about getting somebody to laugh, especially if they're on the other team, um, is if you get them to laugh, they'll lower their they'll lower their uh, defenses. They'll 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 connect to you on some level. Uh, so uh, one of the one of the things I talk about when I talk about gun control is um, I saw the actual video, and I'll tell people I saw this video once, uh, and I'll say to the audience, I'll say, Have you ever seen those videos? This wild it's wildlife video. You ever seen these videos where these orcas, these killer whales? come right up against the beach and they use the beach to trap seals and they will literally just swim halfway out of the water and and eat the seal because now the seal has nowhere to escape. They, they use the beach to cut off an entire half of the seal's escape route. They corral them against the beach and they you'll, you'll see these orcas just go swimming up to the point where they're practically completely out of the water. They, eat, they bite the seal, eat the seal, and then they find a way to get back into the water and off they go. And most everybody's seen those videos. And I'll say, okay, well, I saw one of these videos. I actually did. I actually saw one where that exact same situation happened. You see this little sea lion running for its life. The orca makes the turn. The sea lion is in the surf. The sea lion is running like crazy up the beach. The orca comes out of the water and runs after this, woggles after this thing, and his mouth opens and chomp and comes down, and he misses him by that much. And then the little sea lion turned around and bit him on the nose. Now, does anybody think that that sea lion didn't have a right to do that did that is that sea lion morally required to sit there and be somebody else's lunch are gazelles morally required to let the lion rip their throat out and they have no that that, that running or using their horns is absolutely morally repugnant is that is that what you think because if you think that then there's something morally wrong with you you're 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 you're, you're ethically insane if you think that somebody or some animal has an obligation to be something else's dinner, that they can't fight back, that they can't run away, that they can't defend themselves, they are obligated to, be, to, be, to die in order for this other animal to live. No one, no one will take that position. No one ever will take that position. If a, if a hawk sweeps down on a rabbit and the rabbit tries to kick it or bite it, the rabbit's not allowed to do that? 
No. According to you, he's not. According to you, it's his, it's his obligation to do the right thing and lie down and die and become dinner for the hawk. And you say that because it makes you sound very advanced. But I'm telling you that if you're one of those people that say that, then you would say that right up until the point where somebody's about to kill you. And at that point, your opinion would change like that. When somebody's about to kill you in an alley and all of a sudden I say, hey, if I had a gun here and could stop this murder of you, would you like me to do that? Some people in cocktail parties, heard it with my own ears, will say, I would rather die than have you use a handgun to save my life, which sounds great in a cocktail party. And I don't doubt that they believe it. But if you actually had them against a wall, somebody's coming at them with a knife, they would change their mind. And if they don't, they're insane. So, yeah, Orca Lives Matter. Very, that's exactly right, uh, Hyperion team. Um, so so if, if that seal has a right to bite back, if the gazelle has a right to, to, to use its horns and its hoofs, then why don't we have a right to defend ourselves? When you talk about banning guns, when you talk about writing a law, and just walk this through with me, folks, you're talking about creating a law that is going to force people to turn in their weapons or make it difficult for them to obtain these weapons. The people who will obey the law are people who have respect for the law and who do not consider themselves criminals and won't take the risk of becoming criminals. And those are not the people we have to worry about. I've said this before somewhat recently too with this, these mass shooter things. It's like we're saying, well, it's a gun-free zone. Yeah. You know, it, it, why didn't he why didn't he pay attention were the signs not big enough didn't he realize that this university was a gun free zone or is it just possible that if you're determined to murder as many human beings as you possibly can and then die in the effort that you no longer care about the fact that you've parked in a no parking zone does that not occur to anybody if I'm on my way down to a football stadium and I'm going to blow up that football stadium, I'm just going to open fire and kill as many people as I can, and I park in a zone that says no parking, does it not dawn on you that I don't care what that law says? I don't care. I'm not coming out of this. So why should I care about a law that says I can't have this gun? I'm going to do what I want to do. The only people that will turn in their guns are the people who you don't have to worry about, the law-abiding citizens. This is just the madness of it. It's insanity. You, I can make the whole case about having the guns in the first place, but this this way of pretending like there are not 300 million guns in this country is silly. There are 300 million guns in this country, and anybody who wants one can have one. Face it. You cannot get them back. You, 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 can, you, can, you can, in fact, pass laws, and you can do things like these gun buybacks in Australia, and what you will get is you will get people turning in their weapons because they don't want to be considered criminals. Not many of them, not in this country, but you'll certainly get thousands. You may even get millions of guns returned if it became against the law to own them. But the people, most people would not turn them in. I certainly wouldn't. And the people who you can count on not turning them in are the criminals. And if you ask criminals what they want, if you ask a murderer and a rapist what he wants in a victim and what he doesn't want in a victim, is there any of them that would ever say, I prefer my victims to be armed and alert? No. You ask the rapist or the burglar or the murderer what they want from a victim. They want a victim who is terrified and unaware. They want somebody who's so scared that they can't act. They want somebody they can bully and intimidate. And the last thing that a predator, a predator can afford is prey that fights back. If, if a gazelle kicks a lion in the teeth and knocks one of his fangs out, that lion is done. He's finished. He cannot afford that kind of a risk. That's why lions take down the old and the sick. They can't go out. They have to be starving to take down a healthy animal, healthy prey animal. They have to, they have to realize, now I'm going to die if I don't do, take this risk. But you have to understand what a risk it is to the predator. The predator, has to, the predator doesn't have to succeed every time. Obviously, it's something like lions get one out of three, one out of four that they go after. They actually uh, kill the one out of four attacks somewhere in that ballpark. That's not the risk I'm talking about. They, they can afford to not succeed every time, but they cannot afford to fail. And what failure means for a lion is if you're going after one of these gazelles and a gazelle kicks you in the jaw and breaks your jaw, you're dead. You're done. You're finished. You don't get to eat grass. You're done. They cannot take that risk, and they will only take that risk under extraordinary circumstances. Same thing with criminals. They look for people who are victims because if somebody shoots back or fights back or stabs them or, or, or makes enough noise for them to get caught, they're out of business. That's all they know how to do. They see the murderers and rapists and, and um, 
it's kind of sad if you think about it this way. Murderers, rapists, burglars, all the rest of these criminals, they can't eat grass the way we can. We can go out into the world and eat grass, right? We, food grows everywhere. We can make our own lives and we can collect them, you know, work, make money. We can do all this. These people are incapable of doing it. They can't eat grass. They can't make money. They can't manage their own lives. They're forced to become predators because of how incompetent they are, how broken they are, either emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever. In many cases, they got perfectly good reason for it in terms of the way they were raised. But the fact is, they're predators because they can't be anything other than predators. They're desperate. This idea of disarming the prey, meaning you'll have fewer predators, is nuts. You disarm the prey. If you make it easier for the predator, you get more predators. And people keep thinking about, well, this woman has no chance in a gunfight. Well, first of all, yes, she does. She doesn't have any chance in a sword fight. She doesn't have any chance if we're dealing with sticks or fists. But in a gunfight, she's got a pretty good chance. But that's not the point. The point is, if the, does the predator suspect that she's going to fight back? And if the answer is yes, he'll leave her alone. He can't risk it. And if they all decide to fight back, you know what happens? They go into different lines of work. That's why when we had the Rodney King riots here, uh, I happen to think that the verdict was a terrible injustice. I saw the I saw the video of this thing. I'm not saying that the cops didn't have perfect reason to, to pull him over, perfect reason to, to get out the clubs, and perfect reason to put him on the ground. But once he's on the ground, you get some handcuffs on him. Just beating him forever was just nuts. It was a big injustice. And yet, and yet the people who protested it burned down their own neighborhoods in South Central. Didn't go out to Simi Valley and burn down Simi Valley. You know why? Because they knew they'd get shot if they went to Simi Valley. And they didn't burn down the stores that belonged to the Koreans either because the Koreans are not like us. These, these first-generation immigrant Koreans are very hard, tough people. And when the Rodney King riots were happening, you would see store burned, 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 okay, burned, burned, okay, okay, burned, burned, burned. And the ones that were not touched were the ones that had Koreans on the roof with rifles and guns, pointing them down on the street saying, if you come to the store and smash the windows, we're going to shoot you dead. And because they were Koreans, who were crazy enough to do it, sane enough to do it, they left them alone. That's pretty much it. It is. It's just what Laughing Hyena said. It's a force multiplier. It gives you a chance. So I don't see how disarming the prey stops the predators. And what's interesting is, why aren't we interested in stopping the predators? Why are we so fascinated with the idea of stopping the prey? Why are we so interested in the idea of pulling the horns off the gazelle rather than the claws off of the lions? Why are we doing that? It's because of the cowardice. It's not just the cowardice. See, a gun is something that you can externalize. It, it, if, you want to ban a, if you want to ban murder... You can't ban murder because murder has always been with us, and I suspect murder always will be with us. It certainly will be with us unless we can do some kind of genetic modifications against murder, which I think would not probably turn out that well, but it is, it is built into us. And so is rape and so is stealing. Um, they're built into us, and we have to learn how not to do those things. And so if we want to talk about banning murder and banning insanity, that's a much tougher thing to do than it is to ban a gun. Or let's just say, for the sake of the argument, that evil resides in Coke cans, that every single person that gets shot is, 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 is beaten to death with one of these. Let's just say that somebody freezes a Coke can, and they go out into a crowd, and they beat them to death with a Coke can. And that's all they use. There are no guns. They just beat people to death with Coke cans. That's all they do. What are you going to try and ban? You're going to try and ban this. You're going to try and ban this because... You're going to think that this is the problem, but it's not the problem. It's, an, it's inert. It's not the problem. The problem is murder and rape and, and, and burglary. That's the problem. The Coke can is the, to, is the tool. And if you ban that tool, then people will start killing people with Pepsi cans. Or they'll start killing people with bottles or knives or feet or whatever that they use. And knives and feet, hands and feet are many times more deadly in this country every year than, than any kind of guns and certainly more than assault rifles. So... It's, it's just that simple. You just have to show people that if you want to treat them nicely about it, uh, Matthew, take Cameron's advice and say, I understand why you believe this. You cannot, you cannot uh, appreciate the murder and the, and the insanity and the horror of it. And I, can't, I, I don't appreciate it either. It's, I, I can't get my, eye, uh, my arms around it either. It terrifies me and horrifies me. I'm right with you on this, but I understand that it's there and it's part of the human condition and banning the tool does not ban the motive does not ban does not ban the event it's look it, you can't be enough of an idiot to say that it does that it's not easier of course it's easier to kill people with guns than knives that that part of the gun control argument makes perfect sense 
There's no way to deny it, and you sound like an idiot if you do. If you, if you could, in fact, ban guns, then these mass shootings, it's much, 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 much harder to stab 50 people than it is to shoot 50 of them. And, and, and to claim otherwise, you're an idiot. So that's not the issue. It's not the issue. It, the issue is if you could, in fact, keep guns out of the way, out of the hands of criminals, our lives would be much better. But guess what? We already have laws that keep guns out of the hands of criminals. Felons are not allowed to own guns of any kind. And if it worked, then we wouldn't have a problem. But it doesn't work because they don't care. They don't care. It's just, it's, it's, it's the inability to face the reality of it. It comes back to the parking, uh, no zone parking uh, argument. Well, that guy's parked in, in a red zone. Yeah. Well, that's not, that's against the law. Correct. And I figure if you're going to murder 50 people, then this kind of thing is not going to bother you that much. Likewise, if you're determined to murder 50 people, then buying guns on the black market is not going to bother you too much because they're there and there's nothing you can do about it except defend the people who need defending. And I think that sea lion has a right to bite that orca, and I think that woman has a right to go home that night. And if you don't, then they think there's something wrong with you, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Um, and that's how you do the moral judo on these lunatics. Um, 